Good morning, I'm Mr. Priscilla, and today I want to continue uh, discussing solving rational equations uh, for my Math 1325 class. And we're going to pick up where we had left off. Remember, I printed out a, a list of uh, uh, examples from my math lab uh, that would be like the homework problems that you were doing. And so I said I'd work some of these problems here. So here's the next problem I want to do. It's number six on the list that I'm... Uh, uh, of problems I printed out. Solve the equation and you know I'm a big writer so I like to recopy the problem there. So I've recopied it and it just says solve for x or solve the equation. Remember when you're solving an equation containing fractions you have the possibility of extraneous solutions. You can't allow a numbered uh, denominator to be zero. Remember my little trick for y'all to remember that. Number divided by zero. What does that say? N-O. No. You can't do that. That is undefined. So when I look here that second denominator there's always going to be a 5. It's never going to be a 0. But this denominator will be 0 when x equals what? Should be obvious. When x is equal to 0. So as long as we don't get a 0 for x, then everything's fine. But if we get a 0, we're going to have to discard that number as a uh, potential solution. So Rather than multiplying both sides by the least common denominator the way we were doing the last time, when you have one fraction equaling another fraction, that's called a proportion. And you would have seen a way of solving proportions uh, back in your previous math classes. So how do we so how are we going to solve this? I'm going to use the trick of cross multiplying. Y'all remember see, uh, seeing that somewhere? I only do this when the equation's in the form one fraction equals another fraction. You take the numerator times the denominator on the other side equals the denominator times the numerator on the other side. So we have, I'll take the x times x minus 2 is equal to 5 times the 2x minus 7. Cross multiplying, that gives us x squared minus 2x equals what? A 10x minus 35. And this is quadratic. I'd have to set this equal to 0. And uh, I I'd want the leading coefficient to be positive, so I'd get the 0 on the right-hand side. That gives me an x squared. We have a negative 2x minus 10x. That's a minus 12x. Move the 35 over to the left. Give me a plus 35 equals 0. Oh, this is a simple trinomial. That's easy enough to factor. x and x will give me x squared. Remember I said if the second sign's a positive, you have two of the first signs when you're factoring it. And that on, these rules for signs only work when the leading coefficient is positive. That's why I always make sure that the coefficient on the square term is a positive number. And if it isn't, I either move all the terms to the other side or I multiply through by a negative 1. Either way, it'll give you the same thing. And then this falls out very quickly, 5 and 7. That'll give me 2 possible x values. One is positive 5. The other is positive 7. And are both of those numbers acceptable? What did we say the only thing x couldn't be? We said that we couldn't get a 0, but we didn't want x to equal 0, but we didn't get a 0. So our final answers are 5 and 7. So here I'd go over to my math lab and right in there I would type a 5 and a 7. And I have one more involving fractions that I want to do. And let's see, here it is. Here it is. It says solve the equation. And let me make sure, you know, I'm a big writer, so I've recopied it over here, 3x. Let me make sure I didn't miscopy 17x squared. Yes, okay. Okay. 
when a student comes by my uh, office with their work, they can't find their mistake, the first thing I always do, okay, let me see the problem because at least eight times out of ten, the mistake is the students just miscopied the problem and that's why they can't get the uh, correct answer. So. Okay, here we have two distinct denominators, uh, two dif distinct fractions, but both of the denominators are the same, x minus 3. What number can we not get for x? What number would be unacceptable? I agree, 0. Um, not 0, 3, pardon me. We don't want 3 to equal 0, so we don't want x to be 3. If we go through here and we get anything other than 3, then great, that's fine. But if we get a 3, we'll have to discard it. So, we'll multiply through. Notice the denominators can't be factored, so we're just multiplying by x minus 3. And there are three terms here. That one fraction is a term. Moving to the other side of the equal sign, we get one term, another term. So there's a total of three terms. We'll distribute. And the first time, the first product, the x minus 3's cancel, what are we left with? Just the 3x. The second product, what's going to cancel? Nothing, nothing's going to cancel, I agree. We'll just have a 5x minus 15. Distribute the 5 over the x minus 3. And the third product, the x minus 3 is canceled. to give me a 17x squared. And I, I'm going to get this set equal to 0 once again. I have a leading coefficient here. The leading coefficient is that positive 17x squared. I'm going to leave the uh, x squared term on the right hand side. That means I'm going to get my 0 on the left. I want that to stay positive. So we have a 17x squared. Here we have a 5x. Subtract the 3x. That will give me a plus 2x and a minus 15 and we can 17x squared there's only one possible uh, product there using positive integers 1x times 17x and 15 there's several possibilities there's a 1 times 15 and a three times, not several, I guess there's two possibilities. One times 15 and a three times five. And I can tell three times five isn't doing it, and it won't do it. Just playing out what happens if I put those in and falling it out in my head. And looks like it's gonna have to be 15 and one. So, and I need a positive, does that do it? Check the outer and the inner. The outer product is a negative. Here I am checking. The outer product is a negative 15x. Oh, by the way, I know first times first is going to give me 17x uh, squared. I know last times last is going to give me that negative 15. I wouldn't have written it down otherwise. So all I have to check at the FOIL process is the inner and the outer. The, the outer is negative 15x. The inner is a positive 17x. Sure enough, that gives us a positive 2x, which is what we needed. So we have two possible answers of negative 1 and what would that give us? 17x equals 15. That means x is equal to 15 17 and are both of those answers acceptable final answers? Yes, we said the only number that would be unacceptable is 3. So these two numbers are acceptable final answers for this problem. So I'd come over here to number, to, well, I guess for you, you'd be punching it into my math lab. So what do we have here? You would be typing in. What do we have? Negative 1 and positive 15 seventeenths.
Any questions there? And I think right now I will take a break and decide on what I want to do next. So bye-bye.